EFG Sailing Arabia the Tour has been, a, as usual, a fantastic adventure. A great adventure. We discovered a very nice country. We discovered many, many nice uh, venues here in Oman. Fantastic, incredible racing. Great sailing, good temperature. Sailing Arabia the Tour has been exciting and an uh, incredible experience. It has been two amazing weeks and we hope to come next year. We are very happy to, to complete this regatta and uh, we are very, very happy to win it. Here it's a man and it's amazing for us. Uh, we are very happy of that. We had a couple of clouds this morning, which we luckily enough got on the right side of. So the little ladders up the racetrack. Yeah, snakes and ladders. We, we got the ladders, which is nice for a change. And three 10 miles up the course. Yeah, doing 20 knots for an hour, which is good. Pretty mm -hmm. nice for a change. It's a bit, yeah. of, a bit of time to hang out on deck with your boardies on, not have to put all the wet weather gear on to come up on deck. Turn the fire hydrant off momentarily. Yeah. yeah. You get the salt encrusted. Out of your eyes, out yeah. of your ears, and your nose. Which is white. I think we're going okay, we're just about to get a sketch, so we'll know. Um, everybody that watches at home gets to follow us all on the tracker and get to see what we're all doing. Obviously, we only get the six hourly position report, so. Uh, for us every six hours is uh, quite an important time. Um, it gives us a full rundown on where the competition is, how well we're doing or how badly we're doing. So uh, in about 10 minutes time we'll know we've gone in the last six hours. So hopefully we've gone okay again. Two hundred and thirteen miles behind the leader. Second is Sung Hong Kai Scallywag, 
Do you remember what we were last, Ed? 40 miles. 40 miles, 40 miles behind the leader. Well, now, 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 we were 40, we're now 20. We've still got all our leverage. They are only three miles further south. Keep doing what we're doing. Yes, in the nav station. After a very successful skid, let's have a green curry. But when you're bloody hungry, you'll eat anything. Leader, that'd leave us. We are in a front by six miles. Yeah, the Scallywags have had a very successful day, three consecutive skeds. Um, so, in three consecutive skeds, we've gone from 54 miles behind to six miles in front. Um, but even more important than that is they've gone from 80 miles of gauge to leeward to 20. 053, so they're basically on our back corner. Uh, patience is the virtue, Absolutely. isn't it, Marcus? Absolutely. The more good stuff is we're pointing at New Zealand, which is always I'd like to go, navigational, point where we want to go. A to B. To work. A to B. <laughs> I would expect that the lead will go from 200 to 300 to 400, probably, on the rest of the fleet. The so, richer we're getting richer. Yeah, this stage. Um, but we've got a lot of light air we've got to get through, and XL are only six miles behind, so. Yeah. <coughs> two boat runs. Two keep, boat runs. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling, son. Yeah. Why are you not on deck? Why are you sitting down here? Because I'm off watch. He's good, does one leg of the Volvo, right? It comes off of one leg, now he's trying to take over and be the navigator and tell him where to go. Hey? <laughs> Madge. Marcus Ashley Jones. <laughs> Mate, I've seen pictures of clouds on there. I don't know what it means, but it looks pretty impressive. I don't know what it means either, but... <laughs> it just looks good. I'm, I'm I think it might I'm be the weather in Sydney. I'm emailing my son, explaining to him, tell me how to play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Do your homework, Sterling. Yeah. On a blisteringly hot day on the Gold Coast, pavement was late to the party and was bounced at the entrance. What's happening with pavement? It looks like they're in a bit of trouble. Have they clipped something? They're completely chicken winged up there. They're not going anywhere. She wasn't the only super foiler on the wrong side of the law. ID Intranet also logging off. Got more trouble with these markers. Jimmy, what's in the water today? And this is the tide, Nick. This is three knots of tide pushing them up the course. In a location celebrated for its theme parks, it was wet and wild for Ian Jensen, on board the series front runner. Oh, as we oh see, God. Coops is having a horrible time. He's gone for a swim and he's actually let go there. The race eventually scrapped. But we're hearing the race may have actually been red flagged. It may have been abandoned due to all the chaos. The second Saturday skirmish and again a problem at the start for Steve Thomas and the pavement trio. And pavement making a meal of it as well as they drift towards our brace boat there as well. Oh my goodness, what is happening today for pavement? The fight taken to Euroflex in the next. So I think we got him here. Parko thinks he may have them, that's exciting. Luke Parkinson sending the red rocket all the way to the line in a jaw-dropping finish. And it's a close one, oh my goodness! We've lost both of them overboard. Maybe he was trying to slingshot them over the finish to try and get them there first. A second between first and second, and the same margin in the battle for third and fourth. We're going to have another really tight one here. And CJ from the heavens, well he's back baby. More close quarter combat in the final race of the day. It gets shallow and this is where it gets hot and heavy as well. They've called protests there. Phil's trying to call water on the boundary, Euroflex trying to get him on starboard. That was waved away and by the second marker the racing again came together. The time's level in the race for second. And a great gate there from pavement, they've really come back into the contest. There was a close call at the start of the fifth leg as record point looked to thread the needle. There he goes, up inside. Oh my goowness, those boys have just hit. Ed Powies has literally just hit. They are touching. 
and they are blowing up accordingly. Ed Powell is with too close a look at Phil Robertson's machine. It doesn't come any closer than that. As record points Scotsman found himself isolated from his teammates. Oh man, overboard on record point. That's Neil Hunter the Bowman. But again, the dream team dazzled, powering to the line after another golden day on the Superfoiler circuit. And they've got plenty to boast about. That's six from the Superfoiler Supremo. We're just, we're just having a look at, at what we can expect. So we've done a long port tack out uh, and then tried to hit the ley line. As, as we tack, we're finding we're getting lifted. Stephen Anderson, new Commodore of the Raw. I'm here in Antigua for the first time. It's the 10th anniversary edition. We've got the largest fleet so far. We're expecting 87 boats on the start line. Oh, it's a fantastic race. You know, it's, it's actually in the bigger boats, it's a sprint. It's, you're always in transition. Great breeze, beautiful islands, and you get to come to Antigua. This is a, a classic race that brings together a great collection of boats. You know, everyone has a chance and we're all racing against each other and it's, I think the IRC rule has really done a great job. Doing this race, firstly because I love it, I love sailing. We've done, the, we've done two walk seasons, uh, did the Seasons Point Championship, did the fast net last year, followed by the Ark. It's a very good race because uh, in Caribbean, uh, the weather is good, uh, the water is hot. It's very good for me to, to come here uh, before the road de Rome and uh, I look the condition and uh, I prepare the road around. <laughs> we love the wind, we love the sea, the boat is made for it and uh, I think that is an advantage. The start of these races is always a very interesting, exciting, nervous, really tense time. Trades are usually about 15 to 20 knots, now 20 to 25 knots. What is going to be the challenge for the teams, there is an upper level trough that uh, provides unstable air and that is going to be uh, the driving mechanism for squalls. It will be tricky when you go around uh, St. Kitts, Navies, obviously Guadeloupe. There is many local effects from the islands themselves. I think our biggest competition this year will come from some of the foil assisted boats, the most obvious one being Rambler. The hull is very narrow, so in light winds we are still very fast and then we have tried to compensate for the lack of stability or beam against Rambler and the other boats by working on this uh, DSS foil. Each of the foil act like a turbocharger when you get to a certain threshold. A Rambler, Comanche, you know, these boats are powerful, are wide, they have a very uh, large form stability and etc. Uh, CQS is more the narrow hull. Upwind for sure they may be uh, faster or more performing. I still think Rambler will be extremely hard to beat on, on this kind of a race because there's a lot of reaching in the 80 to 100 degree wind angle with lots of breeze. So the wind is not perfect for us, but we're going to learn a lot about what the foil does and particularly this new one. But this race we have eight class 40s competing. Several of them are new uh, designs like the 152, ours, 145 and uh, several others. So it's going to be very competitive. Pure adrenaline, uh, it is one of the the reasons to be in this class to go downwind. During the three days we're not going to be sleeping or anything. Everybody will be on board and we will be on each and every leg as fast as we can and I think the others are going to do the same. You pull up the spinnaker and then bang and then oh, when a puff comes for a class 40 it goes even higher out of the water and it goes even faster. It's uh, a speed race. Strong winds will favor the, the bigger boats. Records are going to be beaten for sure. We'll be pu pushing hard 
be fun to uh, break a record. You know, we've seen over the years a different variety of boats winning this race overall. They've done such a nice job of, of you know, the format of the race and, and running of the race. And it's now, you say, Caribbean 600, it's like Hobart or Bermuda. Not You know, it's a new race, but it'll be around for a long time. We've got a pretty diverse fleet. We've got pros on... Uh, Obviously the big boats, we've got professionals on some of the 50-foot boats this year. Um, we've got quite a Corinthian fleet as well. It's a big challenge there. They'll all be looking forward to the race, but they'll also be just thinking about what their tactics are on the line, how they get off the line. Good watch, Dee and myself. Um, we started out, we had a nice 20 knots for the first hour, then it dropped off a little bit, and then it picked up again. And then we spotted Brunel just over a cloud over there, and now hopefully we're undertaking them right now, and uh, we're kind of sending it at the moment as well. We've just gone past this little island on our starboard side here. And just off, off the port side, we have this massive boil up of fish. They're obviously feeding on some smaller ones. They look like they might be tuna or something, but they're going pretty crazy, making a lot of noise. It's pretty cool to watch. Well, yeah, we've seen heaps of plastic, probably the most I've seen in, in one watch and it all looks like kind of domestic stuff. Also, the sad thing is we're seeing so many birds around at the moment, more wildlife as we get closer to the adults. And you know, the birds are feeding on the fish and you just wonder whether what they are really actually feeding on. So, um, yeah, birds eat fish, we eat fish, lots of plastic around, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. Also, you know, you know, Pacific adults kind of are the icon of paradise and here we are floating plastic bags and stuff. It sucks. We've all been amazed by just the amount of plastic polystyrene we've seen in the ocean in the last hour. I would say every 30 seconds we see something drift past, maybe even less than that. And that's just within 50 metres of the boat either side. It's so, uh, kind of scary to think how much in such a... I don't think any people live on this island. I think it's inhabited. So. To be somewhere so remote and I see such... Uh, effect of human influences. Kind of saddening. Well, we've got a tropical paradise with the island we're passing that was drawing us like a magnet. And at the same time, we've got lines in the water of um, pollution and debris. So a lot of it is from washed up from the beaches. So coconut husks and leaves and bark, but there's also plastic bags, there's some polystyrene, there's some bottles and it's depressing. On one side of the boat is paradise and the other side is our human waste that's destroying the ocean.
Just going to talk you through some of the things about the fin class today. Uh, some like the ideal way for the sailors that uh, compete in the boat, and then also some of the little things we can do with the with the rig and the sail setup to make it more manageable for different uh, weight classes. So um, this is obviously the fin. Uh, we've got a carbon mast. This is one of the big things that enables us to sail with uh, lots of different weight categories. So we have um, rough weight is around between 92 to 102 kilos. This is the competitive weight range, and uh, the smaller you are. Softer the mast you get, so you get the guys to make a softer mast for you with flatter sails. The heavier you are, you get a stiffer carbon mast made and a much bigger, more powerful sail. So that's how you can keep the weight range quite competitive in, in the class. There's not many classes which have such a wide weight range and you can still be competitive. Um, when we're on the water, we can adjust the mast rate with uh, chocks here at the base. That helps us put the, mast, the tip of the mast forward or back, and also down the bottom we have a bump that we can also spin it around, so that helps us change things on the boat whilst we're racing. We also have quite a few controls here that manage the sails, so we have an in-haul, a Cunningham, an out-haul bang, so that's just all your normal sail control setup that most boats have. Um, some people think it's a few too many ropes, but it's nothing compared to a Napa or a 470, so uh, we, we, like, we like the simple, simpleness there. And um, in regards to the hull itself, you can have it, um, it's in a kind of in a, in a tolerance rule, you can have different layouts and different setup and stiffness in different areas to suit your weight and fitness levels as well. So um, that's a little bit about the fin, and uh, basically, like I say, the heavier you are, the stiffer the rig you go, the bigger the sail, the lighter you are, the softer the rig, the flatter the sail, and then you also got a softer boat as well. So. Hopefully that's um, cleared up a few things about the fin and um, if you want one, get one. Still a lot of this racing left for Shabby Fernandez on board Mafre and indeed all the teams. But one boat at the moment missing from the race course is Vestas 11th Hour Racing. In leg four, Vestas 11th Hour Racing were involved in a collision with a non-racing vessel just 30 miles from the finish in Hong Kong. It ended in tragic circumstances and the full details are still being investigated. The boat didn't sail the import races or the transitional leg five to and from Hong Kong and did not start this leg. With the help of GOC Pindar, the boat has been shipped to Tauranga and was unloaded on the 12th of February and transported 200 kilometers to Auckland, where repairs can now begin. Now, a new bow section has been made in Italy using the official Volvo 65 molds, and after removing the damaged sections, the new bow will be attached under the supervision of an independent surveyor to adhere to the class rules. The goal is to relaunch in time for leg seven, the double points leg from Auckland to Itajaí, Brazil, that begins on the 18th of March. Meanwhile, the Clipper Race Committee has announced that, following an official request from Dare to Lead, the team has been awarded redress for assistance rendered towards Liverpool 2018 in diverting to rendezvous with them and carrying out a successful transfer of the fleet spare water maker and four freshwater jerry cans. Now, it's rice for dinner. <laughs> 